the name of Jesus Christ, good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship on this winter day. I'm very thankful we have as many as we have this morning. The roads are not good. Um, Pastor Kimberly, of course, is on vacation this week, so if you have any emergency, I would say, and I'm volunteering to call Bonnie. If you need pastoral help, she can get a hold of Pastor Kimberly. So let us begin with our gathering song. Oh, that the Lord would my ways guide. Today we light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. We put our hope in the one to come, the promised one who comes from God to bring good news of salvation. We hope in the one who will lead us to walk in the light of the Lord. We hope he will not let us live in dark valleys, but on the high mountain of God. We light this candle in hope. And at this time we sing light one candle, only the first verse. continue with our worship service. The grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was life. The Word became flesh and lived among us.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Protect us by your strength and save us from the threatening dangers of our sins. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that, w- that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all righteousness deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. We are going to read Psalm 80 responsively. Here, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so we will... So. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the readings. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, 
and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect of the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep watch. Here ends the reading of the gospel. And now we will have a sermon from Jen. Good morning. I don't know how many of you remember this, but when I was here 20 years ago, serving first time around in youth ministry, I was pregnant with my son Hunter. I was much younger and prettier then, obviously, but I had a lot less gray hair, and um, if you have ever met my precious baby boy, you know where all this gray hair came from. Um, he is a charming and talented young man with a heart of gold, but also with a knack for mischief. Now, some of the greatest moments I've ever had in my life are about Hunter, as well as some of the most stressful. As a matter of fact, one of the most absolute darkest times, darkest times I ever had in my life was with that kid. So we were at a wrestling meet in Berlin. So 500 screaming, sweaty people, even some youth wrestlers. And if you've ever been at a wrestling meet, you know exactly what I'm talking about, parents. I was one of them. Um, so we're there, and you know, it was about, I look around and no hunter. He was like five or six at the time. And so I was like, where'd that kid go? So I start looking for him in all the usual places, you know, where everybody's kind of hanging out by their backpacks in the bathroom. And I'm looking around and nope, not, not finding him. So then I like ask some of my friends, hey, can you help me find him? So we're all looking around, nothing. So I try to have him page to the hedge table and, you know, I was like getting more people to search. Nope. Nowhere. So now, as you can imagine, I'm like, I got this whole place upside down looking for this kid. Everything is grind grinding to a halt and um, still no dice. I am panicking at this point. And um, I, it maybe it only been maybe 30 or 40 minutes, but it seemed like an eternity. I was dying inside. All of the worst things that you could think of were just crushing me. And if you're a parent and you've ever experienced that even for a minute, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the chaos of hundreds of screaming kids running around, that's a target-rich environment for someone who wants to do something horrible. You know, and I was just praying to God that he would be okay. It was by far the worst thing I had ever experienced in my life at that point. And I was literally on the phone with the police, and I was starting to lose faith. I was giving up hope here. And then all of a sudden, here he comes, just quietly comes out. They had this, like, vinyl big curtain that was hanging on the end of the bleachers so it would sealed off the bleachers so no one can get in there and somehow he squeezed his way in there and here he comes out from behind this curtain he just emerges him and his little buddy with their ds games and their headphones on oblivious that any of this was even happening so you can imagine the rush of emotions that happened next so i'm not gonna lay that all out for you i'm gonna save a little face but in the first Old Testament reading that Kim read to us, we heard that those people were also distraught. I mean, they were waiting and waiting and searching for their Savior. 
and they had been assured in the scriptures that one was coming, but he was definitely not coming fast enough for them, was he? I bet it felt like an eternity. And they were miserable, they were oppressed, and if it was me, I bet you they were starting to lose faith too. And at that time in history, God's people were enslaved. Something, or more appropriately, someone, had more power and influence over them than they could overcome. Years of oppression they were facing, and they were having a hard time crawling out from under that. They were literally begging and crying out to God, don't abandon us, don't do that. They knew they had done things wrong, and they knew they had a habit of straying for God. If you ever read anything in the Old Testament, kind of the same story. They always kind of stray away from God, but they were hanging on, just praying and hoping. And in the psalm that she read, it, it wasn't any better. Same thing. At that point in the history of God's people, they were really sunken into a despair, and they were sure that God was so angry at them and their stupid ways that he had turned his back on them. He was just going to let them sit there and take their punishment for being so sinful towards him and towards each other. They were enslaved, they were oppressed, and it was a very dark time for them, too. But again, they were begging God, bring back a little light into their lives to come and save them. They were sorry. You heard her say they were sorry. And they, were, they just, they wanted God's forgiveness. They wanted to have another chance. And just to be free of all their oppression and their sin at that dark, dark time, what they wanted was grace. That is grace. When you deserve punishment, but instead you are given love and forgiveness. That's grace. So then we fast forward in time to the next reading. Now we're in the, in the day of, well, about 2,024 years ago. And we know what happened for God's people. They finally got the Savior that they had wanted so badly to come for them. And they got that forgiveness, they got that love, they got that reconciliation, but that wasn't the end of the story, was it? Even after Christ had come into their lives, they were still struggling. They had been shown the way, they had witnessed the truth, they heard the words of eternal life right from the horse's mouth, and they still struggled. As soon as Jesus left this earthly spot and went up into heaven, like all humans do, they hit a dark patch. And again, they're like, who, who's going to help us? What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Jesus isn't here to teach us and preach us and lead us. Help us, God. Something's got to happen. And Paul tells them, you already have the knowledge and the skills that you need to make God's will happen right here in your life. You have the tools of grace. You have love. You have forgiveness. Use them. Use them for yourself. Use them on each other. God has not given up on you. He's equipped you. Jesus told you he's coming back. It doesn't mean you just sit there in the darkness and despair and you do nothing. Have a little hope, people. So now this is the part where it's a little tougher to hear. Uh, God's people, that's you. That's me. <laughs> that's us. We're those people. That's our history. That's our same people. So to this day, we're enslaved. No, no, don't get me wrong. I have never been subject to being beaten or, or killed for not hauling pyramid stones fast enough. And I don't know how many of you have ever been persecuted or jailed or threatened death for just talking about Jesus. Um, but don't be fooled. We are all slave to something. So most of us have that something, something that holds us more power and influence over us than we can get out from under or that we can care to admit. You have a hard time with it, something that comes between you and God or between you and other people or maybe even between you and yourself. Um, you might be a slave to your technology, your devices, uh, sports or money or an unhealthy lifestyle habit, I don't know, something. It's, it's, heck, I've been a slave to half of those things I just mentioned. So we all have it, and it can bring us to some pretty dark places. And not to mention, there are those things that bring us to the dark places that we don't even choose, that we don't have control over. Things like when you lose a loved one, or you're being bullied or cyberbullied, you know, or rejected, or you're lonely, or when you're praying for the, the wellness of a young child. Then he's going to come out from under the bleachers. <clears throat> and you think to yourself, just like before, we say, who's going to help me? Who's going to make this better? How will I ever get through this? Where are you, God? And we start to lose faith. But don't forget what Paul told our earliest Christian congregations. You already have the knowledge. 
and you already have the skills to make your life better. You can start right here in your own life. You have love. You have forgiveness. Use those skills. Use those tools. Use them on yourself. Use them on others. Use them all over the world. God has given up on you. He's equipped you. So, Jesus told you he's coming back. And that doesn't mean you just sit there and you wait in your darkness and your despair. Have a little hope, right? That brings me to the next part. I'm not going to lie. When I read this gospel passage, I thought to myself, what the heck? This is like the apocalypse. This is apocalyptic writing. Like, I just got done teaching my confirmation class, the New Testament books, and it said, like, the apocalyptic book is Revelations, right? What the heck is Mark talking about here in this book? So I read it over again, thinking, and I, I even Googled the lectionary to make sure that Jenny didn't mess up and send me the wrong list. I'm like, what is she doing? Is this a typo? And no, nope, it's right. It is about the second coming of Christ. This is Advent. Like, supposed to be about the first coming of Christ? But nope, this verse that Mark is talking about is the second coming of Christ. Why do we just skip to the apocalypse? I mean, it, it's a great topic. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure the people that are in the Revelations Bible study, I'm sure you're proving this to be the, the most glorified reading ever. And it's a great topic to think about. But why does it pop up right now? Well, then it hit me. Actually, my computer hit me, so to speak. Um, so I had copied like that verse 24 and 25 out of there that Jenny sent me, and I was going to put it right here in this part of the sermon, but inadvertently I pasted it up higher in the first part of the sermon after where I started talking about Isaiah. But like it fit there, like it was meant to be there. They speak of a time of darkness and turmoil and God's people, again, that's us, what they were going through in Isaiah's time. So just for giggles, I pasted it again in front of the next part, you know, the part where I talked about God's people like in Paul's time. Shocking. The words still rang true. I bet you can see where I'm going with this, right? So surprise, surprise, it fits perfectly right at the start of the part I just described about God's people. Yes, us, us again. It's us again in the present day. I'm going to read those verses again that, that Craig read to you. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give us its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Darkness, distress, apocalypse, yeah, kind of. But also, it's the struggles we have every day, isn't it? And just like those prophets of the old times told our people from the beginning, God has not abandoned us. He has not turned his back on you. Have a little hope, people. Jesus is coming. We can be sure of that. Hard part? When? Right? Isn't that always the hardest part, though? The waiting? The waiting is the hardest part. When, when are we going to be free from our darkness and our distress and our despair? When are these troubles going to lighten up a little? You know, when, when is it? Why do these dark times always seem to take an eternity? And that's where the last part of the, what Craig read came in. That's the last part of the scripture comes in here. We don't know when. We don't get to know when. Sorry. Maybe it's today. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's another thousand years. So do we just sit around waiting in the darkness and despair? Heck no. Have a little hope. Remember what I read? Remember what Craig read? Therefore, keep watch because you don't know the hour of when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. And if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. So if like Jesus popped up here today, if he comes suddenly, if he appeared out of nowhere, like from behind a big vinyl curtain covering up the bleachers, would he see you sitting there waiting in the darkness and despair? Or would he find you doing something? Would he find you doing something to try to live out your best Christian life right now? We have the tools to make this life we're living better. We have the tools to shine a little light in our lives and in the lives of others. You know those tools, love, forgiveness, grace, if you forgot to use how, you, how to use your tools, don't panic. They come with an instruction manual. Big honker thing right here. If you can't use your tools, this is how you use them. And if this can seem a little daunting, if you've misplaced your instruction manual and you're not really keen on reading through the whole thing, don't worry, there's a helpline. You can contact the helpline. It looks like this. Yeah, even better. Talk to someone else. Talk with other people. 
who maybe had these troubles and they figured it out or, or they're trying to figure it out. The power of hope is contagious. And when we light that first candle on the Advent wreath, it is showing us, it is a symbol that there is a light in our dark times of waiting. There is hope for us at the end of every tunnel. It's Jesus. He is our Savior. You are not abandoned. You are loved unconditionally. So we need to be ready. We need to live each moment in the light. And when those dark times hit, and boy, don't we know it, it's going to hit, isn't it? Make no mistake of that. Um, we can feel so burdened by those things that enslave us, or we just mostly want to give up. But it's in those times that we mostly can't give up. We need to keep looking and keep, help each other keep looking for that light. It's, it's not probably going to be easy. It's probably not going to be quick. Like 500 people in 40 very long, excruciating minutes of the Berlin gym. But God has got you. He's got this. That darkness will not last forever. So have a little hope, my friends. Just a little hope goes a long way. Can I get an amen on that? Mm. In Christ you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation.
God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God, grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now share God's peace with everyone. I'm coming down. Peace be with you. Actually, I only have one announcement, and yesterday there was a group of people that came in to decorate the sanctuary and the rest of the church for the Advent season. I don't know who you are because I wasn't here, but I give you great thanks for doing all that work. I've done it before, and it takes a lot of people to make it all come forward. Does anyone from the congregation have an announcement? Jen. Tonight, um, or today, rather, if you are in the mood for pork chops, you, well, it's going to be here next week, too, so, so don't get burnt out on pork chops. But if you drive by Grace Strippin' on your way home, they're having some pork chops there, too. So, um, but here it'll be next week. So after service uh, next Sunday, plan for pork chop lunch, and um, that supports our kids going on their mission, to, I mean, on their service and mission and gathering trip next summer. Um, and on that note, we have our meeting tonight for any of the kids in that group. So if you haven't signed up yet, uh, there is still an opportunity. So don't worry. Come to the meeting tonight at 6.30. We can still get you on board. I just got to, I'm getting train tickets coming up here next week. So I need to, you know, get everybody's number count in so that I don't buy tickets that we're not going to use. Um, also, uh, on Monday, December 11th, is uh, Secret Sister. So if you, if you are a secret sister, the gift exchange happens on Monday. If you have not been a secret sister up until this point, please come on out and join us. It's at 6.30, and we're going to meet downstairs at, in the basement here at Zion. So um, it's, it's a fun time, and, and um, we've got a little program put together and some snacks. And bring them a mug and with the, your information in a coffee mug, you know, kind of. There's, there'll be slips there to fill out, like when's your birthday, you know, anniversary, that kind of stuff. You put it in the mug, and then we exchange. And it's just basically a whole year of praying for and lifting up uh, some other sister in this congregation or in, in St. Stephen's congregation or maybe just in the community. Um, and we all can use a little bit more of that, as you know. And then on um, December 9th, Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, we're going to have the preschoolers and kindergartens are here. So we're getting their part recorded because there's a recorded part um, that goes with our Christmas program on the 24th, and it's the preschoolers and kindergartners. So they're going to literally be the little stars of the show. So if you have a preschooler or a kindergartner, and bring them on Saturday the, the 9th, December 9th, from 9 to about 10.30. We're going to do all that recording here. And then Sunday is the, the practice, the one and only practice for all the kids um, both congregations and any other kids in the community, if you'd like, to come and uh, learn and be a part of the Christmas program, which is on the 24th. Thanks.
Thank you, Jen. Let us now receive our offering. Let us pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness, we ask that these gifts may be a sign of that love, and that we may continue to share in your divine life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Call your church into fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Empower your faithful people to live with hope and compassion. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God. Let the nations tremble at your holy presence, that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict. Teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems, and bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Merciful God. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Deliver all in any need. Merciful God, listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen and we will sing our sending song.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Keep awake. Amen. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay, hold on.